Hello again, this is Pastor Greg. Welcome to Transforming the World. We're taking a look at the characteristic of decisiveness today. This is the characteristic that we're studying in this book called The Disciples Journal. The opposite of decisive is indecisive, indecisiveness. Indecisiveness, that's my favorite word. Well, um, at least I think it am. I don't know, I'm not sure. Some folks have said I'm a very indecisive person. Uh, maybe they're right. Maybe they're not, I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> Remember Hank Kimball? Hank Kimball from Green Acres? Well, not exactly. Um, well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, do you remember from Star Wars, the Star Wars movies, in one of them, Yoda actually turns to Luke Skywalker and says, do or do not. There is no try. Remember that one? Yoda's, Yoda's telling Luke to make up his mind. Make a decision, boy. You're either going to bring that, that X-Wing fighter up out of the swamp or you're not. Do or do not. There is no try. Okay, he didn't say it quite in those ways, but question number five in the Disciples Journal says, do I realize that I'm either doing what God wants or I am undecided? And that's an odd question. At first glance, it is. I think it is. I don't know. Well, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I'm going to look into that question today on transforming the world. Uh, I'm going to look into that in just a moment. I'll be right back. So question number five is probably best understood as making decisions that align with God's will. To make decisions based upon personal wants and personal desires is deciding to ignore God's view of these things. And of course, as we saw yesterday, this is serving the wrong master. So we either, we either recognize the fact that we're either doing what God wants or we are undecided. We're making decisions based upon wants and desires, and that's ignoring God's view of these things. I think that's the best way to understand question number five. Solid decision-making begins by discerning the will of God, right? I mean, it seems to make sense, at least for a Christian. What you may not know is that God actually delights in revealing his will to those who are eager to follow him. Really, uh, our attitudes toward decision-making should actually mirror that of Jesus Christ. Christ comes along, um, Matthew 6.10, you know, it's not my will, but yours be done. Um, and, and, and the psalmist confess that God actually delights in revealing his will to us. So it's not like God's will is secret and hidden, but it's also not natural to follow God's will. It takes this supernatural commitment that you see in Jesus Christ, who says, not my will, but yours be done. And if Christ confesses that there is a tension there between our will and God's will, it must even be a greater tension in, in you and I. Well, the, one of the first ways that God reveals his will to us is through his spirit. Um, John 16, 13, uh, when the spirit of truth comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. Uh, he's not going to speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So the Holy Spirit actually is present within us to help us uh, discern the will of God. Uh, the second thing is that God reveals his will through his word. Uh, Psalm 119, uh, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. Um, uh, that's uh, verse 105, Psalm 119. And it, the process of decision making here includes making a judgment about an attitude or actions, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak, allowing the word of God to speak, and deciding, deciding from the get-go 
that you will permit God to speak and the Spirit to reveal to you God's will. Um, it's that process, that process that we need to be decisive. This is, Lord, I permit you authority uh, to, to help me make an informed decision, a God-honoring decision. Because if we don't, we're just following an act of our own personal will. And when we follow our own will, not God's will, when we follow our own will, for the most part, those decisions are based on, um, on emotions. They're influenced by our mind, or both, or both of them. The decisions that we make, apart from the influence of God and His Word, the decisions that we make actually reflect the desires of our heart. So, as I said, the key question before making a decision is, do I, am I looking to please myself or am I looking to please the Lord? That's where the whole conversation in our heart needs to begin. When we're wrestling with a decision, when we're wrestling about a decision in life, Am I following the desires of my heart or am I looking to please the Lord? Are, are, are my decisions based upon the influence of God's spirit and God's word? And as we read yesterday, Joshua has really set the standard here, right? Um, Joshua 24, 15, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Uh, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. you got to remember that God sees the whole picture. He sees the past. He sees the present. He sees the future. Um, he teaches and he counsels us. He reveals himself to us, as I said, through his word and through his spirit. God made this promise to us. He said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Psalm 32, 8. Granted, there are going to be times when God's will may seem undesirable. It may seem unpleasant. And there will probably be times when following our heart um, is a whole lot easier. But if we end up learning to trust God, if we begin with that mindset that says, uh, I'm in all my decisions, I'm going to seek to honor God. If we begin the whole decision-making process with that, we'll eventually learn to uh, discern what God's will is for our life. Again, again, let me say this. The, the, the chief key to solid decision-making is, is knowing God's will and not following the desires of our own hearts. So, um, We'll come back tomorrow with uh, with another thought on decisiveness. Um, we'll see what else uh, Scripture can teach us about this interesting characteristic. My name is Pastor Greg. You've been watching Transforming the World. I'll see you tomorrow.